Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated. All right, if you're ready to go, let's start. So if you look at this, this is this is this is very high up. Let me take you slightly further down. So if you look, you know, you can see the lungs there. So this is a thorax. And now I'm going to pull it superiorly again. So this lady in her CT, she had her arms up. So, you know, you can, you can see those two arms up. So and this is the neck and this is as high as the CT goes. So if this is the neck, then that is the trachea. And behind the trachea, behind the trachea is always the esophagus. So if I keep, if I scroll downwards, the esophagus is here, uh, posterior to the trachea. Sometimes you will see it, an air bubble will pop up, uh, an air pocket. But if you don't see an air pocket, that's all right, because the esophagus is usually collapsed. And it should all still be here. The esophagus will still be here. I'll just keep, do you see that, that air, air pocket there? So that is the esophagus. Just a small one. That's the esophagus. That's the trachea. This here are the apices of the lungs. If you want to learn the lungs, and you know, I've got that video on the lungs and bronchi, and you should go through that. So that is the esophagus there. If we keep going down, that's the esophagus. It will could vanish. This air pocket could vanish because the esophagus can be collapsed at times. So that there's the esophagus. Oh, uh, you can see it's, you know, sort of collapsed at that, but the esophagus is still there. So if you're ever looking for the esophagus, just look posterior to the trachea, and that's where the esophagus lives. Now, you can see the trachea here bifurcating. So that's the carina. So the trachea is going into, it's each, uh, uh, the bronchi into each lungs. So, but the esophagus is still here. So this is where the esophagus still continues to exist, and that's the thoracic aorta. So it's right uh, next to that right uh, of, of the thoracic aorta, but here it is the, you know, thoracic esophagus still exists there. So let's keep going down. You can see a little bit of a, uh, you know, opening over there. And you can see, so there, that's the esophagus again. The esophagus is still here, posterior to the heart. That's the esophagus still there. We're still going down. We're still in the thorax. There's the esophagus there. The esophagus is still there as we extend down. Now, if you can look here, you see that and what what's what's happening there is that the diaphragm has come up now so diaphragm is actually very very thin so the diaphragm is very thin and if the diaphragm is thin um sorry i've just said to go what's right under it is um is the liver on the right side so just so that's basically the liver showing up here and uh and if you keep going down you know obviously the liver is getting bigger then the esophagus is still here, right behind. You can see a little pocket there. Then the diaphragm comes up on the left side. And so if so, the esophagus is still here, the diaphragm. So under the diaphragm on the left side is the spleen and the stomach. So you'll start seeing the spleen and stomach on this side. So let's keep going down further. The esophagus is still there. The liver is on this side. The spleen and stomach are on this side. And let's keep going down. The esophagus is still there. Keep going further down. Now you can see the liver more clearly. That is pretty much the liver. And you can see this is the spleen. And this here is the stomach. This is still the heart. This is the apex of the heart. So this is still above the diaphragm. And so and so this is this is still the um, esophagus here. We will keep going further down. And you can see the heart completely vanish. Uh, because we're going quite low down, you can see the lungs also vanishing. Though this is just the inferior, more as inferior most aspect of the lungs left here. And let's just keep going, keep going down. And this is again the liver. This is the stomach, and this is the spleen. That's the abdominal aorta, and the esophagus is still here. But here you can sort of see it moving. It's a bit hard to see, but the if you see this, if you see the stomach coming towards this end. I'll show you if you go, I'm going up again. Now, as I go in fairly, you're going to see the stomach come over here. You see that area is how the esophagus joins the 
stomach. And uh, if we if we go into the uh, orthogonal view, like I'll go there also, if I click at that area, so when I click on that area, it shows me the same area on these views. So if I, cl if I click on the esophagus here, it shows, like over here, it shows how the esophagus comes around and goes into the stomach. So that's how the esophagus, it crosses the diaphragm. If you look at the diaphragm, the diaphragm is always actually quite thin. The diaphragm is a very thin area and just as it crosses the diaphragm and it goes into the stomach uh, this it's around this area and this is it and that you can see over there so once the esophagus crosses the diaphragm almost at that point it goes into the stomach into the cardia of the stomach and so now we're at the stomach so let's go back here uh let me let me just change the contrast a bit because it's sometimes you know there are all sorts of contrast but there's a particular type. So here, if you look at it, the stomach is, you, that's the border of the stomach. You can see that whole thing is a stomach. And, and um, so if you, if you look at the stomach, if you want to, if you, I've got a, hold on, I've got a presentation here. So if you look at this, we've got, uh, that's how the esophagus, this is just a schematic sort of diaphragm, uh, diagram. That's how the esophagus comes into the stomach. So the area it joins is called the cardia. On top of it is the fundus, where there's usually gas because the food falls down there. And uh, then here is the main body of the stomach. And here are, are the pyloric, uh, uh, the, the, sorry, the antrum of the stomach, absolutely. And here's the pyloric sphincter. And then there's a lesser curvature and a greater curvature. So if you look at that, and if you want to see them here on, on CT, hold on, let me see this one. If you want to see them on CT, then, then what you have is, um, you have this, uh, there's the cardia, because that's where the um, uh, esophagus is coming in. If you want to see the fundus, then the fundus is up in the diaphragm, so that's the fundus. So, so as soon as the diaphragm opens up, you know, and you see the stomach, that's where the fundus is. So here, this area would be the fundus. Then this area would be the cardia. So as soon as the esophagus comes in, the cardia is there. But then this area, most of it is the body. So if I keep going inferiorly, that's still the body. That's still the body. Now the stomach, the bo now this area as the stomach is moving forward. Now this is getting into the antrum. This part is the antrum of the stomach. That's still the stomach also. There's a bit of air in the stomach. So, yes. That's a very, very, very good question. Now, let, let's do the stomach. Then from the stomach, I will do the, uh, obviously, small bowel. And then from the small bowel, we'll go into the large bowel. And then I'll show you all the different parts uh, like that. And and then we'll do this again uh, uh, so that you can tell the difference. So I know right now you don't know, like, if that's the stomach. Uh, I, I will tell you, that's the stomach. That's actually the transverse colon, and that's the um, splenic flexure. That's the ilium. Uh, sorry, that's the jejunum. And here is the, here is the pancreas. Now, I know you're going to... You, it, at this point, it's a bit confusing, but let me explain the whole thing and then you'll understand much, much better. So, no, no problem. So here, here we've got the body and as we go through the body, then this becomes, this is now more towards the antrum and the antrum continues on and it takes you to this part over here and that is the first part of the duodenum. So if you keep following the stomach it's different in everybody every every scan will be slightly different but if you keep following the stomach you will get to the first part of the duodenum and that first part of the duodenum and just before the stomach that's where the pyloric sphincter is so i won't go into the duodenum yet let's uh, another thing about the stomach i also want to show you is that this is the lesser curvature and this is the greater curvature of the stomach uh, and obviously, this is the spleen behind the stomach, uh, and um, 
and you can see the big liver on this side. So let's just keep going with the stomach and you will keep following the stomach there. That's the antrum of the stomach and it will take us to the first part of the duodenum. Now the first part of the duodenum, the, the, the duodenum is designed in such a way that uh, it's, it's cut out here. It's cut out here, but the stomach, that's the pylorus. So we, we see over there, so it's, it's, it's fairly posterior. It is still anterior to the kidneys and the great vessels like the aorta and the inferior vena cava, but it is still very posterior to all the uh, gut tissue. So all the large bowel and the small bowel is anterior to it. So this is actually quite posterior. So the descending part of the duodenum and the, uh, 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 this part, this is the third part of the duodenum, horizontal part of the duodenum, they are quite posterior. Then the ascending part is also posterior, but then it, the fourth part of the duodenum then actually moves anteriorly, and then it joins the uh, jejunum right over here. So if you look at that, it's, sometimes it's easy to see, but sometimes it's hard to see on um, CT. So that's the first part of the duodenum. Now, as we go inferiorly, the duodenum will start moving posteriorly. Now it's, it's uh, hold on, that, sorry, there it is. Now, as we go inferiorly, the duodenum, that's still the duodenum over there. Uh, and, and it moves slightly to the side over there and then I'll move up. It's hard. You can you can end up losing it, but that's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is a bit. You you usually at the at duodenum. Sometimes it's very obvious, but sometimes you lose it, and uh, so if you can't follow the duodenum, that's actually fine. The thing you need the 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 common things that you need to know if you're watching a CT is that the antrum leads to the first part, so if you can find the stomach, if you can find the stomach, then then you keep going and 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 following it, and you will find the first part of the duodenum. Then, uh, otherwise, if you keep otherwise, you could lose it. There's another there's another landmark that could help you. <coughs> Excuse me, and that is this. Let me show you the pancreas. So, come to the spleen. And, and once you are at the spleen, you come to the hilum of the spleen. And at the hilum of the spleen, if you follow the hilum of the spleen, you'll follow this vessel. And this is the splenic vein. This is a big vein. You, you will follow the splenic vein. Keep following the splenic vein. You see this is the splenic vein. And the splenic vein comes here and then becomes a portal vein. We will do this again when we do the venous system. But the reason I'm telling you is that if you can see the splenic vein then the, the, the structure anterior to the splenic vein, you see the structure? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. That is the pancreas. That is the pancreas. Yes. So f let's follow the pancreas all the way to the other side also. So that's the pancreas. And the unsonate process of the pan pancreas comes around the first part of the duodenum. Yes, so if you can see the pancreas, now this is, this is the pancreas. And this is all the pancreas here. This is the pancreas. If you can see the pancreas, if you can see the pa the duodenum is usually just inferior to the pancreas. It is around the same area. So the pancreas just ended here. So this part could really could be the second part of the horizontal part of the duodenum. So sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes the duodenum is not obvious, and then it comes around, moves to the left. And then left, in the left, when you see bowel loops in the left, now you see a lot of bowel loops on the left here. When you see, let and let me go superior again. Now you see this is the liver here on the right. We know this is the stomach. You've learned this is the stomach. You've learned this, this is the pancreas, and this is the spleen. So now we've got some bowel loops here. Now if I keep going down, if I keep going down, you see this lot of bowel loops develop here? So if you see bowel loops at the level of the liver, but on the left side, that is the jejunum. So the jejunum is actually in your upper, uh, uh, upper left side. Yes, upper left side. Because on the right side, you've got the liver. 
So, so these bowel loops are the jejunum. Now, if I keep scrolling downwards, these are still the jejunum, but as the jejunum moves, now you can see dye. This person has taken a barium meal, so the dye is in, in the jejunum. But as you keep, keep going down, as you keep going inferiorly, you see the bowel loops coming more centrally. Now they're in the abdomen, like centrally in the abdomen. Now, now once they start becoming central, then they become the ilium. So now this is the ilium. All of this is the ilium. Now let me keep taking. No, the that's the large bowel, and that's the large bowel. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, well, uh, I will answer. Give me, give me 15 minutes and you will have the answer. All right, I'll, I'll, I'm just coming there. So consider this. So this is the ilium. This is this little thing here is the descending colon and this is the ascending colon. We'll come to this. But this is the ilium. Let's, let's understand this is the ilium. And then let's keep going downwards. This is still all of this is the ilium. This is the ilium. All of this is the ilium. This, however, is the uh, descending colon. This is the ascending colon. Let's go further down. Let's keep going further down. This is still all the ilium. This is still all the ilium. And you see this line here? This is the umbilicus forming. So you see that's the umbilicus. You see that? That's the umbilicus. So the umbilicus is a good is a good landmark also because it shows you where you are in the abdomen on a CT scan. So here at the umbilical level, central, this is all ilium. Let's keep going further down. We keep going further. No, fully it becomes ilium. If you go if you go higher up, if you go higher up at the level of the this is the jejunum right here, correct. But as we go lower down, these loops become central. And when they become centralized, that is the that is the ilium. So lower down is the ilium. And so all of this is the ilium. And we keep going down. You will notice us cross the umbilicus here. So this is all the ilium. If we now, now notice that we've got the iliac crests coming up. So now we're now we're in the pelvis now. So here's the ilium. The, there's ilium in the pelvis, but the ilium in the pelvis must lead into the cecum. So the cecum is on the is on the right side. So it's in the right iliac fossa. The cecum and appendix are on the right iliac fossa. So you see this you see this structure. This is the this is the cecum. So now I'm moving back up. So this is the cecum. This is the cecum. This is the cecum, but these are this is the ilium. So the ilium is joining the cecum. Sometimes you can actually see the ilium join the cecum very clearly, but sometimes you can't. But this is around the level. So in the pelvis, when you see the iliac crests, you see the ileal, ileal folds here, and then you should be able to see the cecum here. That's the cecum. So let's follow the cecum upward. Now the cecum, this is now this is going to become the ascending colon. Now we'll go superior again. So keep looking here. This is the cecum, but now it's the ascending colon. This is the ascending colon. Let's keep going up. So this is still the ascending colon. Let's keep going up. This is still the ascending colon. Let's keep going up. This is the ascending colon here. Oops. Oh, I, I changed the Let's keep going up. That's still the ascending colon. So we keep going up. That's the ascending colon. You can see the kidneys showing up here. L let's keep going up. That's still the ascending colon here. And we keep going up. That's the ascending colon. But you see, do you see this little structure here? That is the liver. That's the liver. So let me, do you see that's the liver getting blue? So that is the liver. Okay, so let me take that down again. So this is the ascending colon, but when the liver shows up, so now you've got the liver, you've got the ascending colon, you've got the kidney here. So now this is going to become the hepatic flexure. So this is now the hepatic flexure. Now if you look, 
keep following the hepatic flexion. Now you see now this, I'm going down again. This is the hepatic flexion. I'll keep going up. Soon the gallbladder will show up here. So that's the gallbladder. So once the gallbladder, you know that the this is not gut anymore. This is the gallbladder. So, so if I keep if I keep going down, so that is the hepatic flexion, and so this here is now the transverse colon. So this here is the transverse colon here. You see that this is the transverse colon. We'll keep moving forward. This is still the transverse colon, and I'm still moving upward. So this is the transverse colon here. The transverse colon. Now you keep you keep following the transverse colon. Now you see the spleen coming up. The transverse colon would lead to the spleen. And you can see the transverse colon coming here and leading to the spleen to the. And this here now, you see this area. This here. This is now the splenic flexure. So now that this is a splenic flexor, this becomes the descending colon. So now let's descend. Now this is a splenic. This is a splenic flexor. This is the descending colon. This is this is still the descending colon. This is still the descending colon here. This is the descending colon. Let's keep following. And now it's gotten really posterior. This is the descending colon. Let's keep following it down. This is the descending colon. Let's keep following it. Here is the descending colon. Let's keep following it. And this is still the descending colon here. And if we keep going down, this is the descending colon. If we keep going down, this is the descending colon here. And this is again, this is the descending colon. I'll keep following it. Descending colon still here. This is the descending colon. This is still the descending colon. It will keep going down here until now you see this is you see it looks very collapsed, but this is the descending colon. So this is the descending colon, this is the ascending colon, we just this this, and these are all the ileal loops. So that's how you differentiate. So this is again the descending colon here, and we keep going down. That's the descending colon. You could see a little bit of air in there, but it's still collapsed, or it's got, or it, it could have, it could have feces in it, or stool in it, but this is the descending colon. Now you can see the iliac crest coming in. So now we're in the left iliac fossa. This is still the, des this is still the descending colon here, and now you can see it's moving. That's the descending colon, but now you can see that moving. Medially. So this is the this is the sigmoid colon now. So you can see this is the sigmoid colon, and as this and if you keep following the sigmoid colon down, you 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 lose some of the sometimes you lose the air, but this is now the rectum as it moves posteriorly, and the rectum will keep moving posteriorly. That's the rectum. That's still the rectum, and then it goes into the anal canal right about there. We don't reach the anal canal, so. So let's do it again, but let's do it. Oh, do you have any questions? Um, so from what I understood from your book, the echinacus cross is the descending of the colon. Yes. Look, let's do it again. Let's do it backwards, and then you'll understand it again. So let's start from here. This is where the anal canal would be. And, and, and that is, again, that is the rectum. This area is the rectum. As you can see, it's getting bigger. That's the rectum. And let's keep going up. That's still the rectum. That's also the rectum. That's also the rectum. That's still the rectum. Now it's the sigmoid colon. Now the sigmoid col colon, if you go back backward, it will reach, the sigmoid colon will reach the descending colon. This is the descending colon. That's the descending colon. Now let's follow the descending colon up. Let's follow that thing up. That's the descending colon. It should reach all the way up to the spleen. So let's just follow the descending colon. Here's the kidney, the left kidney showing up. Now we keep following the descending colon all the way up to the spleen. We keep following it. This is the descending colon. We keep following it up. 
we keep following it up and here that you see the spleen is showing up now so here's this here's the spleen here's the kidney so that's yes now it's going to the splenic flexure so that's the that is now the splenic flexure that is the splenic flexure and that's the pancreas that's the stomach there and that's the splenic flexure and if we keep going up you're going to see that that's still the splenic flexure but it is now going this way so this is the this is the transverse colon so so now we've reached the highest part of the gut i actually think the splenic splenic flexure i mean the stomach is here also but this is the highest part so now i'm going to start going low again i'm going to start going in fear again yes around the stomach absolutely so if you look if you look at this yep so that's uh that the transverse colon this, this is the transverse colon so you've got the splenic flexure here this is the transverse colon let's follow the transverse colon here right in front this is the transverse colon now remember this is not the transverse colon this is these are this is the jejunum that's the stomach this is the jejunum and this is the transverse colon so let's keep following the transverse colon. The transverse colon will keep going to the side of the liver. So we're still following the transverse colon here. And now here we are. This is the hepatic flexure. No, that's the that's the no, that's right. That's the hepatic flexure. And then let's so that's the ascending colon. So we'll descend. We'll go down on the ascending colon. We're going in fairly. So that is the ascending colon. And that is still the ascending colon. And we will keep going down on the ascending colon that's the ascending colon that's the ascending colon we'll keep going down on the ascending colon and here now we're in the iliac fossa again so this is the right iliac fossa so that's that's now the cecum and so so the cecum is going to join with the ileal loops so now the cecum has ended these are all the ileal loops now slightly hard these are the ileal loops this is the ilium. Okay. So this is the ilium. So the cecum will join with the ilium. Sometimes you can see it clearly joining, but in in this in this in this we can't. But if you see in the pelvis, in the right iliac fossa, you should you can in certain times see the ilium joining the cecum. Okay. So those are the ilial loops. Now let me just uh, now let me move up superiorly again. So these are all the ilial loops. So we'll just go up. Oh. No, I'm sorry, I'm going down. So these are the ilial loops. We'll go up superiorly. This is again the ilial loops. These are the ilial loops. This is the ilium. This is all ilium here. This is all ilium. This is still uh, all ilium. This is some of it is this is the transverse colon, but behind it is ilium. And as we move slightly higher up than this area, now that is the transverse colon, but just behind it is the jejunum. So these loops are the je je jejunal loops or jejunal loops. Okay. Okay. So this is the jejunum. And if you keep coming up, this, this is the jejunum here. This is the jejunum. That's the jejunum there. So if you look at here, for example, that's the transverse colon. That's the descending colon. And that is the jejunum. Okay. And that now is the stomach. That's the jejunum. That's the transverse colon. And then, and so the jejunum will lead to the duodenum, and then the duodenum will actually come and join the stomach here. The stomach here, and the stomach will join the esophagus. Sir, what's the difference between solar jejunum and Yes, you, you can't see it clearly. It's not like you will see it clearly. But the, this is the, these are the jejunal loops here. Which these loops here are the jejunal loops. So if you look at this level... Okay. These are the jejunal loops. That's a little bit of the stomach. That's the transverse colon. And that is the descending colon. And here you will have the duodenum right here. You can't see it clearly, but the duodenum will be. Uh, let me just see. Just this will be the duodenum. And that's the duodenum. And, and so this will be the duodenum going into the jejunal loops here. And then the du and if you go up, oh, I'm going down. If you go up, you will see the duodenum here join the stomach here. So this is the stomach here. Yes, 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 yes. 
and that's the stomach and you and here you'll see the stomach joining the esophagus here yes, yes. so uh, so so basically now now let's look at it in a different way let's look at it um, let's look at it from here so let's see you know the abdomen we're in the thorax now but under the diaphragm is the abdomen so what you see there is the liver and if you go slightly lower, what you see here is the spleen and the fundus of the stomach. If we go further lower, you see the liver much larger and then you see the spleen and you see the stomach. If you go a little lower, then you're going to start seeing the cardio, the gastroesophageal junction where the esophagus joins the stomach. You see the main stomach with the lesser and greater curvature and you see the spleen and you see the liver. Now, if you go further, if you go further down, let's see, you, you see some gut coming up here. This is the splenic, this is the splenic flexure. If you keep going down a little bit, you can see that's the splenic flexure. That's the transverse colon. That's still the stomach. That's the ileal loops now. Oh, sorry, jejunal loops now. So sorry, jejunal loops now. You, you'll, you'll, you'll see them in a second. And that is now the beginning of the pancreas, this, this structure here. Okay. All right, so let's go a bit further down. So that, that is the pancreas. That is the, that is the stomach. That, the, those are jejunal loops. Behind the stomach. That is still the splenic flexure. And that's... that's and that's the transverse colon. So let's go a bit further down. Now this, that's the little bit, that's the antrum of the stomach. So that is the descending colon. That is the transverse colon. And this is jejunal loops. Okay, now if we keep going further down, let's go a little bit more. And now the stomach you can see is gone. Yes. That's the descending colon. Okay. That is jejunum. That is jejunum. Oh, okay. That is the duodenum. Okay. And that is the transverse colon. Okay. Now if you keep going a bit further down, that is still duodenum here. Oh, can you see it here? Uh, let me see. Is the plus visible? Uh, is this better? The hand? Okay, this this is better. All right. So here is the uh, here is the duodenum, and this is the jejunum. A lot of this is the jejunum. This is the this is the descending colon. Yes. And if I keep going further down, now I'm going up, sorry. If I go further down, now you see the bowel loops coming in the center. This is becoming the ileum. This is becoming the ileum. This is the, this is the hepatic flexure now. This is the transverse colon. And this is the descending colon. Okay. Now, if we go further down, this is the ascending colon. This all is ileum. Okay. And this is the descending colon. Okay. Okay. And if we go further down, this is, this is the ascending colon. Okay. This is all ileum. And this is the descending colon. Okay. And if you go further down, this is um, the ascending colon. This is all ileum. Okay. And this is the descending colon. Okay. And if you go further down, well, it's more or less the same. Let's go into the pelvis. All right, now we're in the pelvis. This is the ascending colon or starting of the cecum. 
This is the ilium. And this is the descending colon. Now if you go further inferiorly, this is still the ilium. This is still, this is the cecum. And this is the descending colon. Now if you go further down, further inferiorly, you're going to see the ilium is, is now finishing because there's no ilium this deep down. But the sigmoid colon is here. So this is the sigmoid colon. If you go slightly up, slightly more superiorly, you can see the sigmoid colon coming from the descending colon. So this is the sigmoid colon. And if you go further and fairly, oh, am I going superiorly? Yes, sorry. So this is the sigmoid colon. If you go further and fairly, you will only find the sigmoid colon in rectum now. The rest of the, rest of the bowel is now, is, is this, we're in the pelvis now. So here you can see the head of the, head of the humerus and the acetabulum. So this is the pelvis. And that I think is the, that is the bladder. bladder. Yes, and, and that's the uterus. This is a female, uh, this is a female uh, uh, section. So, so does that does that help? That's fantastic. All right, one more thing, which is very important. What lies appendix lies here next to the cecum. So, so we so when we're at this, when we're in the pelvis, we need to look for. Uh, some sort of body or outpouching that uh, uh, f from the cecum, which is the appendix. So the appendix starts around there. When I go down, that is the appendix. It's very hard to see here, but I'll show it. But that's where the appendix is. That is the appendix. That's well. You have to you have to find the cecum. And once you find the cecum, the, so, sometimes the appendix points downward, sometimes it points backwards and upwards. But once you find the cecum, you will, you will, ev ev everybody is different. But once you find the cecum, you will find the appendix around the cecum. It's a hard one, but let me show it to you in another way. So let's, let's, let's cut this off. Now, let's look at this whole thing again in this view. Okay, in the coronal view, absolutely. So let's start from the most anterior. So you can actually see the ribs here, the anterior abdominal wall here. You can see the umbilicus there. Now you can see the rectus abdominis. Okay, so you can see the liver and the heart. So so what, but you can see a bit of gut. Now let me show you, This is, what's this then? You see this gut? That is the transverse colon. And that here is the... That here is the hepatic flexure. Oh, let me think. Uh, splenic flexure. Sorry, you're right. That is the splenic flexure. You're correct. Got left and right wrong. You're right. So that's the transverse colon. You're right. That's the splenic flexure. Correct. So that's your trans. So once you can see the transverse colon, but now you can see another structure. What is this? That is the stomach. Correct. So that's the transverse colon. That's the stomach. And you can start seeing these structures. What are these? That is the ilium. No, that's correct. So that's the ilium. That also is the ilium. All of that is the ilium. That is the trans. Yes, e down here. That's all. That's all ilium. So that is all ilium. That is the transverse colon. And that is the stomach. And fantastic. Now, if you keep going further deep. Now we're going deeper. Now you're going to start seeing the blood vessels. Now, I, I haven't done the blood vessels yet. We will do them in a little bit. But you can start. That's the superior mesenteric vein. And we'll do the blood vessels. But you can see the blood vessels. But this is still this is still the ileum. But you can start seeing some of the ascending. That's the ascending colon. That is the ascending colon. So if I go deeper, that that you can see the ascending colon very clearly here. So ascending colon and the hepatic flexure. Now if I go deeper, that is still the ascending colon. You can't see uh, that is the hepatic flexure. You can't see the descending colon yet, but if I go deeper, you'll find the descending colon. That's still the ascending colon. That's the hepatic flexure. That's the kidneys now. This is still here, the ilium, but let me go deeper. That is the ascending colon. Now when you've come to this level, have, have a look over here. 
Let, I, I'm going more superficial now. So I'm going, let's look at the transverse colon here. That's the transverse colon. And that's the stomach. I'm going to go deeper now. Let's go deeper. That's still the transverse colon. Once you go deeper, that's still the transverse colon. That's the stomach. That is the, sorry, the, where, that, that, there is the stomach. That one, you see that structure there? That little, that's the spleen, absolutely. And this is the transverse colon. So if I keep, if I keep going deeper, that's still the transverse colon. And now you can see the splenic flexure. So that, I will keep going deeper. That's the splenic flexure, essentially. That is the splenic flexure. Now when I'm this deep, look how deep I am, that you can see the, you can see the posterior wall muscles. <laughs> At, at this level, you can see the descending colon. So this is the descending colon. I'll go a bit more superficial. That's the descending colon. So that's the descending colon there. And that's the descending colon still coming down here. And now that's the descending colon. That's the descending colon. And there the descending colon is becoming the sigmoid colon. So, so this way you can also see a lot of structures. So let, let's go, let's do this again from superficial to deep. So, oh, jejunum is when you, when you find the stomach, you go a bit, so that is the gastroesophageal sphincter. That is the fundus of the stomach. Uh, that, that is the body and the, the, that's the cardio of the stomach. And then, then there's a body. This is the body of the stomach. And let me uh, let me go a bit more superficial now. That is still the stomach. This is the main body of the stomach here. And this body of the stomach will lead to the duodenum. So that would be the duodenum. And that is the duodenum. That is the horizontal part of the duodenum. And then the other parts of the duodenum you would see over here. And uh, so that's that, that, that's that. So let's let's go again from the most superficial aspect. So here we are, very superficial. Just let me adjust my seat for a second. So, so, so um, the most superficial thing you're going to start seeing is the transverse colon. Okay. Let's go a bit more deeper. So that's the transverse colon now. That is the stomach up there. And that could be the ilium. That could also be the ilium. Let's go a bit deeper. Now that is the stomach. That is the transverse colon. That's that's the ilium. That is also the ilium. That is the descending colon. And that is the ascending colon. That's the cecum. So let's go a bit more deeper. Now you can see the ilium quite clearly. You can see the sigmoid colon here. You can see the cecum here and the ascending colon here. And you can see the stomach and sort of going into the first part of the duodenum here. Now, if you go more deeply, if you go more deeper, then you can see the stomach still here. You can see part of the transverse colon here. This is all ilium. This is the ascending colon. And here is the descending colon, actually. And the descending colon is a bit deeper than this. And if you go further deeper, then the posterior aspect of the duodenum is here. This is the jejunum. Left upper quadrant is always jejunum. And, and the central umbilical area is always ilium. So the ilium is here. And that's the ascending colon. Ascending colon is always, and descending colon are always very posterior. On the lateral and posterior aspect. And uh, so that's the ascending colon. The, you, and that's the descending colon. That's the sigmoid colon there. Now let's go even more deeper. 
So this is still ilium. This is jejunum. That is still transverse colon. Yes, below the stomach, below the stomach, and below the transverse colon, or at the same level also. Uh, if 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 I if I took you, if I took you, where to go? I'll have to close this. I'll give. I'll I'll, I'll show it to you again. Um, all right. Now, if you look, if you look here, look at this level. You see, this is a good level. Uh, if you look at this level over here, you will see. Oh, that don't change the level. No, let's get to the level of the stomach. What what level were we when you asked that question? We were here. We we're about this level. Uh, so you said that's the stomach. That's the transverse colon, and that is the jejunum. That that is correct. But let me take you a bit slightly higher. Okay, let's take you here. So here, what you're seeing over here is you're going to see a lot of the liver. Let me move this here. So you're going to see a lot of the liver. Then this is the transverse colon that you see here. So th there's a part of the stomach that you will see here. That's the stomach. That's the transverse colon. That's the stomach. But this is still ilium. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is jejunum. Sorry, jejunum. I always confuse the words ilium and jejunum. I'll take that. So this is the jejunum. This is the jejunum. And that is the descending colon. Sure. Let's 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 do this again. So here, that's the transverse colon yes, that you can see there. This is the stomach. You can see a little part of it that you see there. Okay, sir. Uh, this is the descending colon over here, and yes. and you see all of this. These are the these. This is the jejunum. Okay, this is the jejunum. So you can't see it here, but just behind that, you will have the jejunum. Okay, so if I went, so this goes. If I went deeper, now you see. Now we're here, and that is the jejunum. All right. This is this is this is good. So I think, I think that, I think that covers most of it. All right. I think another thing you should do is you should download this CT and spend some time on it yourself. You know. And so you can look at all these things and and uh, and see what is what. And if you have any questions, you can you can you know always ask me. Uh, in in in. in in the next session and so it another thing about radiology is that you know you can see these things and they can be demonstrated to you but you have to practice uh, doing it yourself only then you'll actually really understand okay, sir. Okay, sir. and another place to practice yes, sir. is uh, I think radiopedia let me just see So if you go into Radiopedia, not the, uh, uh, how to read a CT of the abdomen and pelvis. Maybe they'll give you. Yeah, so they have series like these. You see, and these are really good. So now, for for ex so now for example, you've got this. It's 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 loading, and now that it's loaded, let me just make this full screen. And see if I can make this bigger. If I go to the top, oops, not that. Oops, no. no. And here, uh, this is Radiopedia. If you go down, let's let's see what it does. So this is still in the thorax. So it says heart, pericardium, pulmonary arteries. This is still in the thorax. Let's keep going further down. Still in the thorax. Talking about talking about the lungs. But here, you see the liver is coming up here. 
it'll tell it will tell you in a second that that is the liver so you said esophagus it says that's the esophagus those are the hepatic veins actually that they're showing you then here you can see the stomach coming up and the spleen if we keep going down that is gastroesophageal junction if you keep going down then that's the diaphragm if you keep going down that is a that is a stomach and it doesn't tell you but these these are the pulmonary veins and the hepatic veins i'm not sure why it hasn't labeled them but it's colored them uh, gastrohepatic ligament it shows you the gastrohepatic ligament which is also called the lesser omentum <laughs> and then it says liver and spleen uh, it shows you the left gastric artery and vein which we will actually go through in this session it shows you the adrenals which I've done in a different session and uh, bile duct where's the bile duct I can't see it here Oh, that's the bile duct. CBD. Uh, 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 if you do uh, my video on the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, uh, and kidneys, in that I've shown uh, the common bile duct and the left and right hepatic ducts and uh, and the cystic duct and and and, uh, and it opening up into the pancreas. So that so if you want if you want to the pancreas, liver, gallbladder. Um, uh, uh, is is a different lecture. It's a different video, and I've and I've um, uh, uh, you will you will see if you watch that video, all of this will be in there. All right, and so now that's the right hepatic artery. That that's a bit extensive here, but we haven't covered those. We haven't covered those, but here you see now the, showing you the transfer colon here, and uh, the stomach there. Uh, common bile ducts. So we haven't done the showing you the pylorus there. The duodenum, the pancreas, etc. Now you see it's showing you the splenic flexure here and the proximal jejunum here. And if we keep going down, so it's second, where's the second portion of the duodenum? It's showing you there. And then the renal pelvis, retroperitoneal. If you want to see these lymph nodes, this is on. I've done the lymph nodes in the lymph node lecture. Uh, let's keep going down. Unsnit process, ampulla. So it's showing you the pancreas here and the and the bile duct associated with it. It's not here. Yeah, there you go. It's showing you where the transverse colon is now. And the and the hepatic flexure. Uh, the ureters. The ureters. I've covered the ureters and the kidney in that lecture, uh, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and kidney. So the kidney and ureters will be covered in that lecture. And that's the third part of the duodenum they're showing you there. And and here it's showing you the peritoneal cavity and the retroperitoneal structure. Do you understand the difference between uh, peritoneum and retroperitoneum? All right, that's good. So um, show, we'll do the IVC and IMA and... So that's the hepatic flexure is showing you there. And what did it do here? Oh, so omentum, it's showing you the omentum there and the parietal peritoneum and the me mesentery here and the small bowel. So it's... Uh, sh that is, that is omentum. Now in, in the, in, in the, in the structure, in, in, the, in, in what I have, now this 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 girl uh, who did the who, whose CT we have, she has a very thin omentum. You can't see much of it, and she's and she's also quite thin. I mean, you can see that there's not a lot of body fat here. So she's actually quite quite thin. Uh, you can see it here also. You know, she's quite a lean quite a lean person. So there's very little body fat, and 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 people with less body fat they also have a very thin omentum. But um, if you see, uh, where's the radiopedia now? Uh, but in this person, you know, they've, they've got a bit more body fat. They've also got a bit more fat in the sides. 
and you can see the momentum is bigger in this person and um so they 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 see all of this as subcutaneous tissue so that's the this guy is fairly fairly large uh, so again, the ascending colon, it's also showing you the muscles. The muscles I have done in the lecture on the abdominal wall. So if you do the lecture, on, yeah, if you see, do the lecture on the abdominal wall and abdominal lymph node station, that does all the muscles. So it's showing you the, uh, so this stuff I've done in the muscles lecture. So there you can see the ileocecal junction. He's, they've shown it to you. I, I usually find it difficult. And it's showing you the terminal ileum and the cecum. And there it's showing you the descending, that's a common iliac lymph nodes, but it's showing you the descending colon there. And it's showing you the appendix. I'll show you the appendix also, but it's showing you the appendix here. And, uh, and now it's just the blood vessels. And look, it's showing you the ileum or the small bowel. And then there are all the muscles, and now we're pretty much going into the pelvis. What they show you here? Oh, those are the blood vessels. We'll do the blood vessels in a second. And there, it's showing you the sigmoid colon. Uh, and and what is this here? It's the uh, now it's the around the rectum area. So that's the re uh, the mesorectum is the connective tissue around the rectum. And utero. And there is the rectum, uh, rectum there, okay. and it's showing you the other structures in the pelvis. We haven't done the pelvis, so uh, so if do use Wikipedia, uh, Radiopedia. Sorry, Radiopedia is very is is excellent. I mean, once you start understanding a bit of uh, the anatomy, just go into Radiopedia or do what I just did. Just Google, just like Radiopedia abdominal organs. Just just Google it. And it will give you certain articles and, and you can actually go through those articles. And Radiopedia is excellent. I can't explain how good it is. The only problem with Radiopedia is that it is very hard to search. You have almost everything you need to know as a radiology trainee in Radiopedia. But it is hard to search. So the better way to search is actually Google. <laughs> so you go so you go on Google and you write Radiopedia and you write abdominal CT, for example. And and uh, normal op it will give you a normal abdomen radiology case and it will upload all the images and it will actually show you all of it. So you can go to Radiopedia also, and, uh, and Radiopedia teaches, uh, it's almost got almost everything in it. All right, so yeah, absolutely. So as I was saying, make sure you use uh, Radiopedia whenever you need to. It, 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 is, a, it is a great resource. And um, uh, after watching the lectures that I give, and if you understand them, do, do, uh, do them something similar about the, uh, uh, relating to that lecture like, the CT abdomen, Google the CT abdomen in Radiopedia and see a couple of other uh, other um, uh, CTs there, and and they will and and they will they will help you. Okay. All right, so we've um, let me go to the checklist, and this is our this was the checklist, uh, and so we've covered this stuff. So we've covered the esophagus, the thoracic esophagus, the esophagus to the diaphragm, the gastroesophageal junction. We've covered the stomach, the duodenum, the jejunum, the ileum, uh, the cecum. Oh, we didn't do the appendix. All right, let me show you the appendix. Then we've done the ascending colon, hepatic flexure, the transverse colon, the splenic flexure. We did the appendix, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it in a, in a better way. We've done these structures also. And then we haven't done the arterial system and the venous system. So we'll do that. Let me just show you the appendix, and then we'll do that. All right. So for the appendix, it, it, it should be here in the right iliac fossa, and if you if you keep and it, and it should be near the transverse colon. So you see, you can actually see the appendix fairly clearly here. That's the appendix there. So that's the appendix there, but it is not always, not always in this position. So you have to come down to the cecum and look for the appendix. 
and see if you can see it. Now, it's it's fairly clear in this in this uh, coronal section, but if I moved you into the trans axial view, then in the axial view it's a bit hard. So there it is in the axial view. So in the axial view, you have to sort of look for an outpouching that comes out that ends as a as a closed sac, you know, something like that. Yes, so as I said, it's slightly different in every way. So an, another good way to do it is try to find it in the coronal view. And in that way, you can find it there also. So it's actually a bit hard. Let's see how it is. Um, I mean, it's not hard. Once you see it a couple of times, you'll see it. So let's let's see if we can find the appendix here. Abdomen and pelvis. Labeled series. Let's look at the coronal. Oh, no, these are images. Um, and so here, the appendix should be, you should be able to see it. Now, this guy's larger, as you can see. So that... That is the cecum. That is the appendix there, as it's showing you. And that, so the appendix in this person is sort of coming into the screen. You see, that's the appendix there. So it's actually a bit, bit hard to see. Uh, so that's the appendix there. But if you followed this let's see how, how let's see how is it any better in the axial so in the axial it shows the appendix here that's that's the appendix over there hard to see hard to see absolutely you're going to have to see quite a few to actually figure these ones out but there you go that's that's where the appendix is in this one all right, let's go back to this one. And so we sort of covered that over there. So the appendix in this one is kind of like over here. All right. Um, well, let's let's just go into the uh, into the uh, blood supply. So let's start again from over here. Now the blood supply. Now, let me see if you can clearly, uh, let me just fix the contrast a bit. Can you see the aorta? Okay, let's see. So that is the thoracic aorta. As, as a matter of fact, let me, let, let's just revise the blood, uh, the blood supply first. So, um, now this is the, this is a schematic sort of diagram of, uh, of the of the aorta of the abdominal aorta so there's a the diaphragm and as the aorta crosses the diaphragm it gives it becomes the abdominal aorta so above the diaphragm is the thoracic descending aorta and below the diaphragm it is the abdominal aorta and as the abdominal aorta comes through and it, it is coming down and the first branch it gives is a inferior phrenic so it gives two left and right inferior phrenic branches that we will not be looking for. They're a bit small, and unless you have an angiogram, they're hard to see. So we're, we're going to leave that. And we're also going to leave this next one, which is a suprarenal. So it also gives a suprarenal artery. So these are two, two branches that come out of the aorta almost immediately as it crosses the diaphragm. There's a left inferior phrenic artery, right inferior phrenic artery, and a left and right suprarenal arteries. But then there are... There are there's that one the three unpaired branches in the aorta and those unpaired branches are the ones that supply the GIT so because the GIT itself is an unpaired structure so the first one is the celiac trunk then then it's the superior mesenteric artery and after these two there is a paired branch which are the renal arteries we will be doing the renal arteries also. We will not, then after that, there, there are the two gonadal arteries or the testicular arteries or the ovarian arteries, depending on male or female, but you can call them the gonadal arteries also. So that is the left and right gonadal arteries. And then there's the inferior mesenteric artery. And after the inferior mesenteric artery, it bifurcates into the common iliac arteries. So, and throughout its course, it gives off about five left and right lumbar arteries. 
So it's uh, so that's that's pretty much the those are pretty much the branches of the abdominal aorta. Now you can see all of these branches if uh, you've got an angiogram, if there's been dye put into the blood supply, and you can see them. But if it's not an angiogram, then you can still see you can still see the major arteries. You can still see the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, the inferior mesenteric artery, the renal arteries. And uh, and then as it bifurcates into the common iliac arteries, so those we will do. The ones we will not do right now are the supra, uh, so so left inferior, um, left and right inferior phrenic arteries, uh, the left and right suprarenal arteries, uh, the lumbar arteries we will not do, and the gonadal arteries we will not do. The rest we will do. Uh, all right, and so if you look at that, then well, the first one we'll do is the celiac trunk. So let's just look at the branches of the celiac trunk first. And the celiac trunk has, you know, it's a bit confusing because it's got so many, it's got so many branches. Now we won't be able to do all of them. Some you can see, some you can't. But um, if you if you look at the stomach, um, the celiac trunk, celiac trunk essentially supplies the stomach, the spleen. And the liver. Um, so, th so that's uh, so that's the main supply of the celiac trunk. So, the celiac trunk comes out, and it divide initially has three branches. The first, well, they're all three come out together of the trunk. One is the splenic artery, which goes to the spleen. One is the common hepatic artery, and one is the left gastric artery. So the splenic artery then obviously supplies the spleen, uh, and 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 let me and 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 let me. It, it gets a bit confusing. I always find the celiac trunk confusing, but let's look at the stomach. Now the stomach is supplied by a left gastric artery. The lesser curvature is supplied by the left gastric artery, and the right gastric artery. This is the lesser curvature. The greater curvature is then supplied by the left gastroepiploic artery. It's also sometimes called the left gastroomental artery. And, and the stomach is on, on the right side, the, larger, uh, the greater curvature is supplied by the right gastroepiploic artery or the right gastroomental artery. So, so it seems pretty simple in the stomach that you know, you've got the lesser curvature as the left and right gastric artery, and the greater curvature has the left gastroomental and the right gastroomental artery or gastroepiploic artery. So it sounds simple that way, but all these arteries come from a different branch. The left gastric artery comes straight from the celiac trunk. The right gastric artery comes from the common hepatic artery. The left gastroepiploic artery comes from the splenic artery. And the right gastroepiploic artery comes from the gastroduodenal artery, which is a branch of the common hepatic artery. So it is very confusing. I always forget this, and uh, it is it is just one of those things that, that that's just the that's the celiac trunk. So now, furthermore, the celiac trunk, the common hepatic artery, gives off the gastroduodenal artery, as we just did. And as soon as it gives off the gastroduodenal artery, it becomes the hepatic artery proper. Now, the proper hepatic artery can then gives the right gastric artery, which we spoke about, and goes on and then supplies the gallbladder and the liver. And so if it's going to supply the gallbladder and liver, it's going to supply it through, the, the gallbladder is going to be supplied through the cystic artery, the liver is supplied to the right and left hepatic artery. Yes, once it gives the gastroduodenal artery, it becomes the hepatic artery proper. So it's a common hepatic artery first, then it gives the gastroduodenal branch, and then it becomes a proper hepatic artery. Okay. So the... Uh, no, the prop, the the prop, yeah, the proper uh, hepatic artery gives the right gastric artery, the cystic artery, 
the right hepatic artery and the left hepatic artery. So these are the celiac trunk branches are the most confusing anatomical arterial branches of any arterial trunk. <laughs> they're just they just they just random, but um, and and they're not always like this. This is just uh, the, this is the majority cases. There's a lot of normal variation. So let's let's look at it again this way. Now this is a bit of more of an anatomical diagram. So the abdominal aorta gives off the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk then gives the left gastric artery that's coming here on the lesser curvature. It gives a splenic artery that's going to go there towards the spleen. So it goes behind the stomach and goes to the spleen. And the splenic artery then gives the left gastroepiploic artery to the greater curvature. Then the celiac trunk has a branch called the hepatic artery proper. Oh, so, sorry, the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery then gives off a branch called the gastroduodenal artery. Now, the, the, those are up here. So the common hepatic artery gives a branch called the gastroduodenal artery that goes and supplies the stomach by the right gastroepiploic, the greater curvature by the right gastroepiploic uh, artery. And the, ga and the gastroduodenal artery, as the name suggests, also supplies the duodenum. And it also supplies a bit of the pancreas. No, I'm, I'm probably confusing you. Now, the hepatic artery then, then, then gives off the, uh, as I mentioned, the gastroduodenal artery. Then it continues on as the proper hepatic artery. So here it was the common hepatic artery. Here it's the proper hepatic artery. And the proper hepatic artery then has a right hepatic artery and a left hepatic artery. And the cystic artery can come from the right hepatic artery or it can just come from the common, uh, the proper hepatic artery. So this, so this is, this is uh, you know, as this is very confusing, but this is as much as, you know, one can learn and you have to keep revising it. But let's see if we can find these. Let's see if we can find these um, on, the, on, on our orthogonal map here. Okay, so let's, uh, on the CT here, absolutely. So we've let's we've got the abdominal aorta, and, and let's keep going deeper. As here, it is going to give off around this place. It's going to give off the celiac trunk. Now here, it gives it off here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you see that structure there. That yes, that is that is the celiac trunk right here. Uh, let me just change the contrast. Maybe it'll make it a bit more brighter. Oh. Not right there. It's a bit bright now, but there you go. So that, that is the celiac trunk. So let's keep following the celiac trunk. Let's follow it backward. It joins the aorta. So we, as you go superior, it joins the aorta. As we now go inferiorly, it's coming here. That's the celiac trunk. Here, it needs to give three branches. This is one is one is supposed to be the splenic artery that will go this way. One is the common hepatic artery that will go that way towards the liver. And one is and one is the left gastric artery that will go towards the stomach. Okay. Now, I can't in this person I actually have difficulty finding the left gastric artery. But the splenic and hepatic hepatic artery are very obvious. Now if you look here, that is the splenic artery. Now, if you follow that artery, just follow that artery, you will see it's going towards the spleen. You see that? It's going towards the spleen. And there it goes, and that's the splenic artery. Now, here, as soon as it joins the spleen, I'm not sure if that's the branch, but it also gives off a branch that is the, gas, uh, the left gastroepiploic artery. So the gastro so those are the branches here. You can't really see them very clearly, but if you had an angiogram, then that would be very obvious. So there you go. That's the splenic artery here. Let's take the splenic artery back. That's the splenic artery. Let's take it. That's the splenic artery again. Let's bring it back. That's the splenic vein. So don't confuse it with the splenic vein. That's the splenic artery, and that's the pancreas. So if you, you that's the splenic artery again. That's the splenic vein. That's the splenic artery. 
That's the splenic vein. Here's the splenic, splenic artery that's going to join the common hepatic artery here. And you can see the splenic vein is going to join here. We'll do the veins in a second, in a little bit. Let's just, um, so let's do the hepatic artery now. So let's go and go the other way. So here's the common hepatic artery. So the common hepatic artery continues on and it's going towards the liver. It's going to give a gastroduodenal branch, which it gives off around this at around this level, which is usually hard to see. But if you go from, but at this level, there's usually a gastroduodenal branch that goes downward. Then this, this, this could be the right gastric artery. You can see this is going towards the right side. So this could be the right gastric artery, but this is this is again the hepatic artery proper and just follow it. Look, it's going into the liver, into the hilum of the liver. That's the hepatic artery and here it divides into left and right hepatic artery, which you can't see very clearly here, but I'll show it to you in another view. So let's do these again. Let's do these again in a different view. So I'll click on that there. So that's the celiac trunk there. That's the celiac trunk right over there. And if you look at it here, that's the celiac trunk right over there. So that's the abdominal aorta there, and that's the celiac trunk, and that is the superior mesenteric artery. So that's how they look. They're very close to each other in, 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 the, in the abdomen. So that's the celiac trunk. That's the uh, superior mesenteric artery. Um... So uh, so there you go. So let's follow the splenic artery first. Let's just look at it here. So if I click on that, no, not move, uh, I will use this. You can, Well, the splenic artery is not too well seen here. Let's just do the hepatic artery, actually. If you follow the, do you see this? This is the hepatic artery here. Oh, let me just, hepatic artery right there. You follow this, that's the hepatic artery. And there you can see it dividing into the left and right hepatic. So that's the hepatic artery. And uh, so you can see it, uh, the left hepatic artery, the right hepatic artery, and this is most likely the cystic artery, which looks quite big because that's where the gallbladder is. All right. It's early, early, early morning there in India. I can hear the birds waking up. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's go into, now let's do the uh, superior mesenteric artery. So first, we when we see the superior mesenteric artery. Now that no, that is the inferior mesenteric artery. There it is. The, su the superior mesenteric artery. Sorry, the su the superior mesenteric artery supplies almost after the after the stomach, uh, and and up to the and a little bit of the duodenum, the all the ileum. And all the jejunum is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. The superior mesenteric artery also supplies the cecum, the appendix. It supplies all of the ascending colon and, and two-thirds of the transverse colon. It supplies that whole area. The descending colon and the sigmoid colon is then the inferior mesenteric artery. So we'll do that in a second. So let's do superior mesenteric artery first. So superior mesenteric artery has a middle colic branch, which supplies the transverse colon. The right colic branch, which transverse, uh, that supplies the ascending colon. An iliocolic branch, yeah, which the ileum, cecum, and appendix, they, they come from the iliocolic artery. And a lot of small branches that are just called jejunal and ileal branches that come out and supply the jejunum and ileum. So let's try to find these. We'll find some of them, not all of them, but in, in, our, in, our, in our structure here. All right, so... Now again, here we've got the uh, we have the aorta. I can't. Oh no, this is the wrong thing. Hold on, this is the right thing. Oh no, sorry. 
This is the right button. Too many buttons. All right. Um, here we've got the abdominal aorta. Let's 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 move up. Actually, let me move up and let's start from up here. Here's we've got the thoracic aorta. Now we've got the abdominal aorta here. Uh, now, as as the abdominal aorta goes further down, you can see the celiac trunk. Oops, the celiac trunk comes out right there. Now, just in fear to the celiac trunk, you see the structure here? Just follow that structure. That is the superior mesenteric artery. That is the superior mesenteric artery. The reason it, the reason it looks like um, two, the reason it looks like two of them is because it is one artery. It goes up and then it comes down. So when you go more in fearly, you can see the one that's the, the artery that's coming out of the aorta, and that is also the superior mesenteric artery. You see superiorly the joint. So you see that it's the same artery. And so that's the superior mesenteric artery. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. And you'll notice initially it has to give off a branch, which is uh, um, the middle colic branch, which will supply the transverse colon. I find it difficult to... There's a branch there coming off there. That could be the middle colic branch, but I, can't, I cannot be for sure. Because we can't, I can't, I can't tell. Because I can't really, we don't have an angiogram. It's a bit hard to see here. But, but you'll see a few branches as I go down, coming out this way. Now let me just go in fairly, and you'll see a few branches coming out that way. You see a couple of branches that have exited here. There's another one that just exited there. There's another one that just exited there. And there and 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 the and the artery itself continues on downward. And it's hard to follow, but here it is. It gives off all its branches and moves down that way. So those are the jejunal and ileal branches, and it moves on itself as the iliocolic artery. So let's move them back. You'll see branches coming here, coming together. So those are the branches from the iliocolic artery. You see them collecting here. See them collecting here? Iliocolic artery branches are coming together here. And then here's the structure there. Then there's the structure. You'll see. You see that branch? Now these are the ileal and colic branches coming together. The ileal and colic branches coming together here. And there you've got... Oh, and there, right there, joins uh, the aorta almost. So that's a superior mesenteric artery. So there's another branch of the superior mesenteric artery that is the right colic artery, which I can't see here also. So at, at your workplace, if you are lucky and you see an angiogram of the abdominal vessels, then you can follow them and you should be able to see these branches. So let me revise the branches with you once again. So severe mesenteric artery has a middle colic artery. That's the first branch. Then the right colic artery, iliocolic artery. And actually, it, it sometimes they even say it continues on as the iliocolic artery. Uh, and and you have a lot of on and and a lot of uh, so th these all move towards the right, but you have a lot of. Uh, branches moving towards the left, and these are the jejunal and ileal branches. So, if you see an angiogram, uh, if you see an angiogram uh, of of these blood vessels uh, uh, in your work, uh, you'll be able to see them. All right. Okay. Then it is the inferior mesenteric artery. So, Yes, I'll show you. Now, first, let's let's just look at the branches of the inferior mesenteric artery. So, the inferior mesenteric arteries come here, so fairly lower down, and it has a left colic artery, sigmoidal arteries, and then it doesn't say here, but it ends as a superior rectal artery. Okay. So it's got a so this this is so this is nice. This shows the branches of the superior mesenteric artery. There's the middle colic, the right colic, and the iliocolic. And then the inferior mesenteric artery is the left colic, the sigmoidal arteries, and the superior rectal. So it's like this, that the ascending colon is on the right side. The transverse colon is in the middle. The ascending colon is on the left side. So the artery that supplies the ascending colon is the right colic artery. 
the ascent the artery that supplies the transverse colon is the middle colic artery because it's in the middle and the artery that supplies the descending colon is the left colic artery because it's in the left but you also have to keep in mind that the right colic artery that supplies the right part of the colon which is the ascending colon comes from the superior mesenteric artery and the left colic artery that supplies the descending colon which is on the left side is comes from the inferior mesenteric artery so that is just something you have to keep in mind the transverse colon is supplied by the middle colic artery and that is also from the superior mesenteric artery and the sigmoid colon is supplied and the rectum is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery and it is supplied the sigmoid is supplied by the sigmoidal branches and the rectum is supplied by the superior rectal artery and uh so let's uh let's let's keep let's keep doing this um mm, 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 all right so let's let's look at that let's look at that here uh oh where did we go over here so let's so there you can see the abdominal aorta let's go higher up and first see the two branches that we've already done so here we see here we see yeah th this is the celiac trunk then you see the superior mesenteric artery then we keep going down as a matter of fact now that we're here i might as well show you do you see this artery here can you sort of see that it's hard to see let me see if i can make the contrast now you might be that's artery can you do you think it's this that that is the renal artery yes that's the renal artery that's the right renal artery if we keep going further down you'll see the left renal artery just just let's keep an eye oh we're going up sorry sorry I'm going the wrong way that's the right renal artery let's keep going further down and here you see that that is the left renal artery you can see if you can follow it from the kidney to the aorta you see that's the left renal artery and after the right and left renal arteries there's going to be a small branch that comes out it's going to be hard to see but I'll show it to you I'm still going in fairly <coughs> it is around this area there it is okay you keep an eye here you see that little thing up there that little thing up there that is the inferior mesenteric artery now you see it moving outward you can see it moving there you can see it moving outward yes now look at this you can you can you see the structure here now i'm um, yes yes actually after the renal now if you had an angiogram if you had a proper angiogram then after the renal arteries after you see the renal arteries you should see the gonadal arteries after the gonadal arteries you'll see the inferior mesenteric artery so i have skipped the gonadal arteries because they're very thin and hard to see but if you had an angiogram then yes you should be after the celiac trunk you should see the superior mesenteric artery after the superior mesenteric artery you should see the right and left renal arteries then you should see the right and left gonadal arteries uh, and then you'll see the inferior mesenteric artery so let's do this uh, so here here what we've got is the what i found is the inferior mesenteric artery that's right there so you can see it oh where did it go sorry that over that is the inferior mesenteric artery that one so the inferior mesenteric artery is going to give off uh, its its uh, its its branches the le the colic arteries it will give off its branches so the branches are here then it will branch and give off sigmoidal arteries and if you keep following it that one it it goes posteriorly and becomes a superior rectal artery just keep following that one and you can see it going posteriorly and becoming the superior rectal arteries okay. so that is a superior rectal artery it comes back here and that is now the superior mesenteric artery 
No, no, sorry. That is now the inferior mesenteric artery with with getting, yes, with the uh, with getting its colic branches, and you can see that inferior mesenteric artery there. It is still coming up here, and it's still coming up here, and here it is joining the aorta, right there. There it is joining the aorta. Yes, the inferior mes inferior mesenteric artery is the last branch. Uh, of the abdominal aorta before the aorta bifurcates. Yes, absolutely. All right, so, so we've done the inferior mesenteric artery and we've sort of done the branches of it. So you'll have a, a, the left colic, the sigmoidal branches and the superior rectal branch. And so I think that, I think that covers the arteries. So we've done uh, so we've done the abdominal aorta, the celiac trunk. We've tried to see as many of these branches as we could. We saw the splenic artery. We saw the common hepatic artery. We actually did see the left and right hepatic arteries and the cystic artery. We could, I'm, we might have seen the right gastric artery, but I'm not sure if that was the right gastric artery. We, we didn't see the gastroduodenal artery because I couldn't find it in this one. Uh, we did the superior mesenteric artery. We did some of the jejunal and ileal arteries, but we couldn't see all of them. Uh, we did the left, right, and left renal arteries. We did not do the gonadal arteries. We did not do these, but we did the inferior mesenteric artery, and we saw some of the branches. Yes, and then we got to the aortic bifurcation. Correct. So let's let's do the venous system, and uh, and then and then we'll be we'll be done with this. So. Um, so how much how much time do you have? Do you have about ten minutes? Okay, good. So um, let's let's start with the splenic vein. Actually, let's come up here. And the splenic vein. I mean, you can you see the spleen? The splenic vein. If you see it, you follow. This is the splenic vein. That's the splenic vein. And that splenic vein is coming here and joining this vein. That is correct. That is the portal vein. So the portal vein, that's that's the portal vein that then goes and divides into the left and right portal veins. So I've done in in the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas video, I've done the portal vein and the hepatic veins in detail. So you can look for those there. But here I will just do the portal vein and the mesenteric veins so the port so the portal vein is joining the splenic vein i think i have a i think i have an image here to explain this do i have yes if you look at the blood supply of the git the venous drainage of the git sorry you've got the superior mesenteric vein that drains most of the git the superior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein and when it joins the splenic vein, that one, once those two join, they form the portal vein. So the splenic vein must be joining the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. The inferior mesenteric vein usually drains into the splenic vein. And that is how the portal venous system is, 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 uh, it, it, it functions. So let's, let's go back at this and see if we can find... We can find the superior. So we found the splenic vein. That's the splenic vein. So that's the splenic vein. We found the splenic vein. We found the portal vein. That's the portal vein. So where is the superior mesenteric vein? So if you follow the portal vein, if you follow the portal vein, let's follow this. And now we've got joining the splenic vein. Now I'm going to keep moving inferiorly. You see that vein? That is the superior mesenteric vein. And next to it is the superior mesenteric artery. Remember we just did the superior mesenteric artery? Let's follow the artery. Yeah. So if you follow the artery, you see the arteries joining the aorta right there? That's the artery. Right next to the superior mesenteric artery is the superior mesenteric vein. So this big vein is the superior mesenteric vein. It's a large vein. As I keep going lower, you're going to see all its tributaries. It gets a lot of blood supply from all these different... But let's go back up. It's a nice big vein. You see that? That's the 
uh, a superior mesenteric vein, and you will see the superior mesenteric vein join the splenic vein at right this point. That's the superior mesenteric vein joining the splenic vein, and it's and continuing on as the portal vein, which then goes into a lip. So that's the superior mesenteric vein. The inferior mesenteric vein. I've been trying to look for it in this in this, uh, but I couldn't find it. So, so I I it's sh it's sh I I was I think it's slightly, it comes in a slight it comes through a slightly different part path here, and I've been looking I've I've spent a few few minutes looking for it but I really couldn't find it. <laughs> it should be coming off around this area but I I don't see it come off. That might be, the inferior mesenteric vein. That one, I I no, I can't say for sure. All right, so the inferior mesenteric vein I can't find here. So, but those are the done. So you you see the splenic vein, you've seen the portal vein, and you've seen the superior mesenteric vein. Those are the major veins of the GIT. The other veins that we can do, which we can do from down here from the pelvis. This these are not. These are not the GIT veins, but these are the other major veins, which we should do. So let's start from here. Now, this is in the legs. So that's the femoral artery. But just behind the femoral artery is the femoral vein. It bit medial. So the medial, that's the femoral vein. So let's follow the femoral vein. So if you follow the femoral vein, as soon as, now you see that's the big femoral vein here. And that's the big femoral vein here. Now, if, once it crosses the inguinal ligament and it comes into the pelvis, now it's in the pelvis. Now this is now this is called the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein joins with the internal iliac vein, which is going to happen just just around here. You see now it's joining. You see that that's the external iliac. The internal iliac vein will be coming from here, and it joins at around this area did now I forget where it is in this but I can see it here now 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 once the external and internal iliac veins join they become the common iliac vein the common iliac vein then will come together they're right there that's that's the common iliac vein here and let me let me tr let me try to find the common iliac vein so that's the external iliac vein there Oh, on this side, that now it's joined. Now it's joined the the internal iliac vein, and it's become the common iliac vein. Now here's the common iliac vein. That's a common iliac vein. You can see the common iliac vein coming here and crossing over, and it will join the common iliac vein of the other side. And now these are the two common iliac arteries from the aortic bifurcation. And these are the common iliac veins that are joining. And if I keep moving upward, you will notice, keep looking at these and look at this also. So the common iliac veins will join to form the IVC and the common iliac arteries will join to form the aorta. So now at this level, the common iliac veins have joined and that's the inferior vena cava and that's the abdominal aorta. So let's follow the IVC. We keep following the IVC up. Two major veins that will drain in the IVC in the abdomen are the renal veins. So let's find the renal veins. So the right, here we're almost there. Now, the right renal vein is very small because that's the IVC and that's the right renal. The left renal vein is actually quite long and you see that's the left renal vein. Can you see the left renal vein? So that's the left renal vein. That the right renal vein is very small, and that's the IVC. Now you can see the IVC here, very close to the gallbladder and the kidney. That's still the IVC there. If you move the IVC further up, it's still the IVC there near the gallbladder and kidney. We move further up. You see the IVC also comes very close to the portal vein but the portal vein doesn't drain into the IVC. The portal vein is still intraperitoneal and the IVC is retroperitoneal. So there's actually, they're, 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 they're separated, but they're so close. So that's the portal vein going into the liver. That's still the IVC. 
then that's the portal vein there. You sort of lose the uh, uh, definition of the IVC here, but this is where it is. If you keep going up, that's still the IVC. That's the portal vein dividing. If I keep moving up, the IVC, the 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 if I keep moving up, the the now the hepatic veins, you'll notice will start converging in and drain into the IVC. So if I keep moving up, these are the hepatic veins. You see these hepatic veins? These hepatic veins are coming. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you go through my uh, lecture on the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, <coughs> there I show you the there there you'll see the you'll see the difference between the portal vein and the hepatic veins, and it'll it'll exp explain that to you. So here is here is the IBC, and here are the hepatic veins. You keep going up, the hepat you can see the hepatic veins drain into the IBC. And now the IVC is crossing the diaphragm. Okay. Here it's crossed the diaphragm and now it's merged with the right atrium. Okay, yes. There's the right atrium. Yes, yes. So that's how you that's the whole IVC. Okay. Okay. So I can I can we can go the other way. How much time do you have? Five minutes. Five minutes? Well, I think that I think I think we should end it with that. All right, so. Oops, I think I'm going to have to. No, this is full screen. Okay. So, would anyone would anyone like to answer that? I think. Um, let me just pull the chat out. That is, oh yeah. yeah. Are you with us? Because I can't see you here anymore. But yep, that is the esophagus. Very good. Let's keep going. We're still in the thorax. Anyone else would like to answer that? You can unmute an answer too if you like. This one is not too hard. Anyone? This is the quiz. That's the esophagus again. That too, I think, is the esophagus. All right, now, this is where I am going to actually pause and I'm going to see. So uh, is uh, are, are you able to hear me? Is everyone here? All right, it says yes, all right. Well, why don't you answer these questions? I'll let you answer all of them. All right. Well, I think I think one issue is the others missed missed uh, a lot of the demonstration. I think they they came late. But if the others want to answer, feel free to answer. But um, but I'll 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 ask I'll ask I'll ask to answer these, and I'll the next slide I'll I'll ask the others. But if not, I might just come back to you because I think. Correct. Yes. You can also consider A as the gastroesophageal junction. Which is I mean you, you are also right. And they're both they're both correct. And B was the stomach and C is the spleen. Very good. All right, we're getting there. Okay, now these are parts of the stomach. Okay, I'll ask. Would you like to answer these two? And I hear nothing from the. 
All right, I'll ask. Would you like to answer these? Hmm. Nothing from either. And would you like to answer these? And so it comes back to you. So I think you're going to have to answer these. Correct. That's the curvature. And B is the grid. Yes. That is correct. All right, let's keep going. Now, again, same uh, same thing. And yes, uh, you're going to have to answer these. Correct. No, no, these are not the Jejunal loops. Very close to the spleen. You are, you are not, you're not wrong. This, this is the transverse colon. I, 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 I will, I will, I can consider that correct. But where does the transverse colon end? At the splenic flexure, yes. Wrong spleen, yep. That is the splenic flexure. Very good. Okay, so let's, yep, next one. Correct. Correct. B is transverse colon. Hmm. See, I think. I believe so. I think C could be jejunal loops. I agree. Yep, the uh, D. Yep, you can uh, descending colon. Yep, and or the splenic flexure still could still be considered the splenic flexure. But descending colon colon is also correct here. Actually, both are correct. All right, let's keep going down. All right. Yep, it is the first part of the duodenum. Good job. B is transfer. That's correct. Yep, these are jejunal loops. Or just D is descending colon. Correct. Very well done. Now, another level below. Correct. A is transverse colon. Correct. That is hepatic flexure. Yep, these are jejunal loops. Well, we can just call them. Correct. Descending colon. Correct. Well done. And this one? Yep, this is the ileum now, correct? Uh, 
uh, still ascending colon, correct? C is the descending colon, correct? Well done. Yep. We're not in the pelvis yet. We're not in the pelvis yet. The, the pelvic, the pelvic landmark are the iliac, iliac bones. Correct. Correct. Alia loops. Correct. Yes, C is the descending colon, which is collapsed. Not pathologically collapsed, it's just like there's nothing in there or so this is just all right now we're in the pelvis because you can see the iliac bones is the ilium yep. Yes, now it's the cecum. I got that spell. That is the descending colon, correct. All right, well done. I think this is the same. I don't know why I put that there, but so this is the next level, same thing, but one level even lower than that. Is it correct? Now you know where it is, but it is different in every city. You know where it is, so there's you left, but it will be everybody has a different. But you know where to look for it. Be a sigmoid colon. Good. Another step further down. That is the rectum. You know that's that's a that's a good question, and uh, well, let's see if we can find an answer to that because I think maybe uh, maybe they'll give us one. Uh, is the uh, the young class the most general part lower GI law? What is that? That's which lies between the anal verge in. In the perineum below and the rectum above. All right, we know that the description in this topic is that's now usually examined clinical. Practice. I actually, I am not sure, but this diagram is actually. Let me see if I can go to this diagram. This diagram is actually quite good. Th this it's actually. I wish can I copy the diagram? It is. Uh, let me show you again. Oh, it's not this presentation. When you, there's the pelvic diaphragm. That's the pelvic diaphragm. That's the pelvic diaphragm and that's the urogenital diaphragms. These are two diaphragms that, you know, collectively are called the pelvic floor. And I may be wrong. I'm not sure. My, the anal canal is after the pelvic diaphragm. And before that, it's the rectum. And, and if you look at it laterally, actually, I'll show you another image. Actually, let me see another image. They don't show a lateral image. This is a, oh, it doesn't show properly. There's a sling because the anal canal, as I mentioned, uh, you have to say levator ani. Let me just levator ani. Now it'll show up. It shows up, but not in a lateral view. Just give me one second. It'll be here somewhere. Why doesn't it show in the lateral view? That's strange. Uh, yeah, the levator. Yeah, that's where it becomes the anal canal. 
because that's where the anal canal shifts um, and, 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 and moves from a posterior angle to an anterior angle. I don't know why there isn't a proper diagram for it. There's so many of them. So that's the rectum, and and the rectum is posterior, but then but the anal canal is a bit more anterior, and so the rectum moves anteriorly, and then it and then this is the area where the levator and I uh, work, and that's where the curvature is, and that's where the anal canal begins. All right. Where did the quiz go? It is this one. Yep, you've got to the rectum. All right, then let's do the next one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yep. Now these are in the coronal view. Correct. Correct. C is plenic flexure, yep. D, I think, is transverse colon. Maybe I was, yeah, yeah, I think, yep, I think that is transverse colon. Yep. G is. Oh, I didn't shoot him on. Yeah, correct. Good job. All right. So that was just a basic quiz of the GIT. So you covered that well. Uh, abdominal vessels. Let's see how that goes. Yep, that is the abdominal aorta. Okay, what's next? Yep. That's the celiac trunk, yep. And that's the abdominal aorta. I think I've put the abdominal aorta in every one. Now you go down one more level. A is portal vein. Very well done. Correct. That's the splenic vein. Yeah, you know, you might be right there or... Is it the, it is either superior mesenteric artery or it's or it's a celiac trunk still? No, it's not the vein. The vein, superior mesenteric vein joins there. L uh, let's let's go to that and let's see. But uh, is it the? I think it's the celiac trunk. But let's see what it is. Celiac trunk or SMA? We'll just we'll qu question that. Yes, and that is what we will do right now. Where is the? So I think we are about at this level. Would you agree? So let's just let's. So if you click on that, it is here. So. Is that the celiac trunk? I think it might be. That's the superior mesenteric artery. So that is that is the celiac trunk. I'll show you why. Because you see, you keep your eye there, and you see it's dividing into two. And this one is the hepatic artery, and, and this one is the splenic artery. So that is the celiac trunk. If we go a bit more inferior, and now that that is divided... Then where is the superior mesenteric artery? Oh, that's the superior mesenteric artery. There it is. That's the, yeah. There it is. That's the superior mesenteric artery. Absolutely. So now, if I'm going up, that's the superior mesenteric artery, and if you go slightly higher up, that's the celiac trunk. So uh, let's go here again. 
and that would be the celiac truck all right and that would be what we were thinking next no now it's the spear mesenteric artery yes now it's the sma yes just hold on there's a chat all right it's the sma let's go to the next one now what is this fit further down one of them is still the sma Correct, B is SMA. Correct, A is SMV, very well done. That's the spear mesenteric vein and that's the spear mesenteric artery, correct. So that's good. And what is that? In this one? Yeah. The SMV? Yeah, a big SMV. Yes, he has a big SMV. Or she she has a big SMV. I couldn't find the inferior mesenteric vein in her. It might be that the SMV actually covers both of them. That's a big SMV. That's correct. All right. Next one. That is which side? Left renal vein. Correct. And that would be? Correct. Absolutely. Left renal artery, correct. Right renal artery, correct. And the <laughs> now I think somebody left but <laughs> just joined us so thank you for joining us <laughs> and uh, you may have missed no that's good thanks for coming you may you may have missed some of it but if you want to answer feel free to answer any of them all right so there you go last one either can answer it or maybe on a roll she might as well answer it no 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 that's not the ascending colon the ascending colon is over here oh these are the blood vessels so blood vessel a small yes it's right next to the aorta it's one of the branches of the aorta Yes, this is the inferior mesenteric artery, correct. Correct, correct, correct. Well done. I'll let you answer these also. Because get them very easily. This is the abdominal aorta and this is two major branches of the abdominal aorta. It's all right. You can pass it on if you like. <laughs> That's why. Back to you. B is celiac tract. Yes, it is the SMA. Correct. Very well done. All right. And uh now again yes that is the sm no uh, what did you say again 
Is that SMA or SMV? Now let me put on SMA and let's try to find it. Let's see what it is. Because I thought it was the SMV, but it could be the SMA. So, uh, yep, here we are. So it was so it was this structure, wasn't it? It's this structure here. Yep, that's the SMA. You're correct. Because the SMV is this structure. There you go. So that's the SMV and that's the SMA. So that's the SMA. And just behind, posteriorly, that, oh, anteriorly, actually, that's the SMV. So you are correct here. That that is the yeah, that is the SMA. So that is correct. No more question mark. Well done. Now what is that one? I'm sorry. I actually forgot to demonstrate that. I did dem. I have, I have, I have, I have demonstrated this artery, but not in this view. Yes, that is the inferior mesenteric artery. Well done. Correct. And that... That is the IMA. And that, this is the superior mesenteric vein. All right. Yep. These, these ones, what are these two? Correct. Right renal artery and left renal artery. All right, next one. And that is it. I think you've done. We've covered it. That's it. No, no, we're not done yet. Are, are you, do you have, uh, do you have another 45 minutes to spend? Oh, good. So let's just do this one also. It should be this one. All right. So what what abnormality do you see here? That's a small bowel dilatation. So why would a small bowel be dilated? You are you are absolutely correct. But why would the small bowel be dilated? Yes. Yes. So that's the pancreas, correct? Yep, so that is... So you got it. I think you said it. It is a small bowel obstruction. Very simple. Yes. That's correct. Well done. All right, let's keep moving this. And uh, what does that look like? Correct. Yeah, could be an umbil umbilical hernia. And is it yeah. is it causing an obstruction? You can see, yep, you can see the... That's correct. Yes. Correct. So small bowel obstruction due to strangulated hernia. Yes, that's the word. So what's the difference between in incarcerated and strangulated? I think I think it
I think I think there's I I I forget I forget but I think there's a hernia that's reducible. That that's the hernia that you can push back in. But if you can't if you can't push a hernia back in or if you don't feel a cough impulse from a hernia then that is uh, in, that is incarcerated but that doesn't mean that there's any symptoms of pain or obstruction but if the hernia is incarcerated and then its blood supply can be compromised so incarcerated hernias can lead to strangulated hernias in which the blood supply is compromised and then and and then there's ischemic bowel and then there's bowel obstruction and ischemic bowel so I think it's a reducible hernia. Then after that, it's an incarcerated hernia. And after that, it's a strangulated hernia. I think so. I hope I'm not wrong. But we'll, we, can, we can check another day. All right. What do you see here? Yes. Yes. Could be could be a band could be a band or, or post surgical yep gastric ga gastric banding leading to a small bowel obstruction absolutely. But I think because I designed this for you know senior medical students basically what I wanted to show them is uh, how small bowel obstruction shows up with dilated bowels, f uh, fluid in the bowels, and an air, air uh, you know, you can also find air in the bowel, air fluid levels in the bowel. So if that is clear, and the other thing that they should be able to see is that, you know, whether it's small bowel or large bowel. So you can tell, you know, if this is small bowel, that's the stomach, that's the liver. So that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's good. That's very good. All right. Yeah, that's true. Gastric banding should be somewhere here. That's true. Unless they made a mistake or it went too far down. Or yes, there could be something else. I could have. I could have. I I actually do not know anymore because when I got this, I I don't know where I was looking. But I'll have to. So you're right. Gastric banding should be up here. This is a bit low for gastric banding. But the obstruction does seem to be here. So if it's not gastric banding, whatever it is, or if it's an adhesion or something, this is where the this is where the obstruction is. Yes. All right. Let's look at the next one. So that is here. And here. And here. Yes. Yes. Yep. 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 Absolutely. So there's large bowel obstruction, most likely because of bowel mass and which could have ruptured which yes cecum is markedly dilated absolutely and there's air fluid levels and it could have led the obstruction could have led to a perforation which is why there's air under the diaphragm all right I hope the others are following. If everybody, if everybody's all right. Okay, this is something else. This is not obstruction. Correct. 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 So this is. Yes. 
So we don't know if it's diverticulosis or diverticulitis. I don't think, can you tell radiologically whether it's diverticulosis or diverticulitis? I th symptom wise, you can tell because people are, uh, yeah, so it, Yes, yes. Yes, I agree. Well, well done. That is very good. All right, what is this? Now this, this, this looks like the stomach would die in it, but Yep, you're correct. Yep. Yes, that's that's the only thing. Are you very right? And, but we we don't know what the cause is, but and uh, and the stomach is fine. It's just got um, radioactive dye in it. All right, well done. It's it as it is. And what is this? Not nothing. Nothing too different. Yes, that's true. No, correct. So again, the ascites you can see because of all this fluid in the peritoneum. Yes. Or, 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 or distending the, distending the wall. Absolutely. Abdominal wall. And what is the same thing? I think. Ascites again. A bit more severe this time. All right, well done. I saw you guys can see this. What is this? <laughs> Correct. That was very picked up very quickly. That's the aorta, and that's the dissection. <laughs> yes, extremely painful. And this is the same thing, but they're just showing a rupture and blood loss. Yes, that's the rupture, and this aorta is 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 uh, dilated. It I don't think that there is a, a dissection in this. It's just an aneurysm, and it's calcified. I think it's calcified. So older person. Now this will be hard. I mean, I I also only know because <laughs> I I I read what it was. Otherwise, I'd never be able to tell. I'll give you history, severe abdominal pain, severe abdominal pain for the patient. Collapsed, collapsed bowel, severe abdominal pain. Yes, you can't see the cause. As I said, I only know because I know the answer because I know where I got this from. And this is mesenteric ischemia. Uh, so it's a it's a blockage of uh, a mesenteric artery. Most likely superior mesenteric artery because these structures are supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. Yes, yes. Yes, they'll be very. Yes. And 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 you know severe abdominal pain if they show up with severe abdominal pain and so you can consider ischemia. All right. Now the arrow shows you exactly what we're looking for. So the question 
correct? Thrombus it is. Which vein is it? Yep, that. It is SMV, correct. Superior mesenteric vein thrombus. Correct. Well done. All right. And this one is another thrombus. Not in the superior mesenteric vein, but what could that be? No, it is a thrombus, but it is not in the superior mesenteric vein. It's in another structure. Uh, no, correct, superior mesenteric artery, close, almost, almost the electron, but superior mesenteric artery, that's, that, that could have caused this, I mean, I, I, they're not the same patients, but something, a, that, that sort of thrombus in the superior mesenteric artery could cause that level of bowel ischemia. And uh, what are these? None of their. No, no, they're not. It's not calcification. It is. It is. Uh, it is. It's a stent. Absolutely. So. Renal artery standing. Yes. So renal artery stenting in case of renal artery stenosis, correct. And it's a mass, a diffuse mass in this area. Yes. Correct. It is colon cancer. Well done. Yeah, just go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, that's no, all right. But while she's gone, you guys uh, can look at this one. Wall yes, bowel wall thickening, correct. And which uh, which part of the bowel is it? Correct, sigmoid to the rectum, correct. No, not ulcerative colitis. Okay. I don't think... Uh, back, let's try next one. Yes, a form of malrotation, but a particular type of malrotation. Have you heard of a volvulus? That is classic volvulus. It's called a. It's called a vol. It's called a whirlwind whirlwind sign or something. It looks like a whirl whirlpool sign. Can you see something here that could have led to this? Yeah, that's true. Again, volvulus once again. And yes, lower down, uh, sequel, and it is led to a large bowel obstruction and dilatation. Nice. What do you think this is? Yes. 
correct the signs of obstruction right here so this is when a bowel goes into the other bowel into susception yes so remember if there's a teaching if there's a teaching session and they show you volvulus, they will always show you interception also, because <laughs> these are always taught together. And if they ever show you interception, they will show you volvulus also. Sim similar, similar thing here. That is also interception, you're correct. Yes, uh, it looks like ileal loops. Correct. And that's the end of the quiz. So actually, we're done. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated.